Ah, the Nambanane, so loved by many. These are called Vichetivia Nambanane, and they're like donuts, but better, and covered in cardamom syrup. To start off, we need to make the cardamom powder, and I'm using cardamom pods because, well, that's my preference. I like using a mortar and pestle to gently open the pods by whacking them. At this point, all that's left to do is just pick a pod, open it up, and remove the little seeds, like I'm doing here. Take your time. It'll be here for a while. So once you've emptied all the contents of the pods, the next step is to again whack them, but less gently now. We need a powder. Now that that's done, the next step is to make the syrup. In a thick bottom pot, you want to add one cup of sugar and three quarter cups of water. Bring the star of the show, cardamom, and add that in as well. A quick stir to introduce all the ingredients to each other and bring to a gentle boil. The aim here is to get a slightly thick syrup and one little trick I use to know if it's ready is the bubbles. If they're smallish and haven't fully covered the surface, then it's not ready. It's ready once the bubbles are larger and cover the whole surface area of your pot. Oh, and please be careful when you do what I'm doing. My hands are sugu hands. So once it's uh, thick and slightly like a, like a honey, just imagine honey with a little water in it. You want to just switch your stove off and cover the syrup and let's make the dough of my dreams. For this you need two cups of all-purpose flour and one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast followed by three teaspoons of sugar. Resist the urge to add more. Next in goes coconut milk and then two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm using a dough hook because I just did my nails so anyway. You might have to add more coconut milk to the dough so that it comes together but don't overdo it so add a little at a time. The dough should be so soft that it drapes the dough hook but not sticky. This is so satisfying. That's what the younglings say these days. I feel like I'm keeping up with the young ones. So add your dough uh, to a clean bowl or not, up to you, and then cover it and set it aside for 20 to 30 minutes. At this point the dough is even softer, really, and you'll find it has morphed into a cloud. It's so, it's so beautiful to hold. I don't know, let me know if you agree with me. I just feel so attached to this dough right now. Anyway, you want to then cut your dough into two pieces. I'm using a dough scraper to look professional and all, so you can obviously use a knife at home. And then just roll it out on your countertop. Make sure your countertop is clean, please. Especially now. Last thing we need is germs anywhere. And you want to cut it, uh, roll it out to about 16 inches. So if you're like me, you can have a tape measure next to you. So once it gets to around 16, even 17 inches is fine, we're not fussy. You want to cut off 1.5 inch sections and set them aside until you're ready to shape. And now we shape. For this I like to press it down gently, like you're making a nice round disc, and then punch a hole in the center. And as I'm watching this, I realize I should have just cut out donut shapes from the dough instead. So roll all the dough and cut out donut shapes. It makes more sense to try that, so I don't know why I was struggling like this. But anyway, this is the method I was taught, so sticking to that. So then just twist it to make a number eight and set it aside. Once again, the method I will never use again from now henceforth. I <laughs> just want to kind of stretch it out into a donut shape and then just twist it to make a wonky looking number eight. Gosh, it looks like it's had such a stressful life. <laughs> okay, test the oil and I like to do this by adding a wooden skewer. When bubbles form, the oil is ready. And then you add your wonky looking number eights. And it's important to keep the oil temperature low. A gentle bubble is what you're looking for so that they don't brown too fast. Because if they brown too fast, you know, the outside will be cooked, the inside will be raw. Not exactly what we're going for here. So once you have achieved desired level of brownness, in my case, which is golden, you want to just take them aside and all that's left now is the last step, which is the hero step. 
And that's to dunk the vichetti in your sugar syrup, cardamom sugar syrup, and coat evenly. You can use a spoon for this or even a skewer. Again, it's up to you. It's really not rocket science. Just make sure they're really well coated. And repeat until you've used up all your vichetti. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.